This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, it's Alex, it's the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight from the East Coast to the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, out to San Francisco, California, we go for the lovely strains of Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Bubbs. <laughs> Yeah, it's a holiday. Happy holidays, which I know we both hate. So yeah, yeah. Well, happy holiday to you too. And uh, uh, let me ask you a question. You were supposed to go get uh, your um, eyes done, right? Yeah, this is a bad story. So uh, it's a bad story. Uh, yeah, it. Uh, well, mind you, I told him that getting uh, this is what uh, for. Uh, Cataracts. Cataracts that I've had two done, and they're like, it, it's a breeze. Okay, well, it didn't happen. Let me start with it, that. So, it, it didn't happen. Why didn't it happen? Well, I went to the place, and I check in, and then, uh, you know, they give you a bunch of papers to sign that, uh, like, you never read them, but I think they say, if, well, if we kill you, you can't sue us, things like that. Yeah, right. So I'm sitting there, and they they put the they I, they put the hairnet on me. We're getting ready to. And the nurse starts reading some shit, and something like, I think it was about the twilight sedation. And she says, I don't know if they have to read this, but sometimes some people don't wake up from this. And I got this horrified look on my face. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. They were going to sedate you. That's what they do to everybody. They give you a little sedation. They don't put you under. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, like, uh, just a little little, little something. Yeah, I think it's called Twilight. I don't know what it is. Well, I don't know if it's Twilight. Uh, uh, that's kind of like propofol or something like that. But anyway. It's not heavy, whatever it is. But yeah. uh, Just something to calm you down. I don't know if this is something that never happens, but they have to read you, right. tell you that in case it does, but. So she told me that, and I got the horrified look on my face, and then she goes, uh, well, she said, uh, this is elective surgery. You can cancel this if you want to. And I said, well, this is kind of late to cancel it. She said, no, you can still do it. <laughs> I just said, yeah, let's cancel it. Oh, jeez. So I felt euphoric, and then after I got home, I went into a some deep depression for two days. Well, because you should have gotten it. Yes. So you're going to go back and get it? I'll go back if they'll have me. I think they'll probably be mad at me for that. I think that they'll see you. You know, I mean, they're a hospital. Come on. They want, <laughs> your, they want your business, okay? <laughs> you know, she, she told you she was the one that said, if you don't want it, you don't have to do it. She did, yeah. So. Yeah. So now these are, this is two procedures that you haven't had done that you were going to have done. Right. And the reason why we've canceled certain things or moved dates around was because, you know, I wanted to, and the last time I wanted to accommodate the fact, the next day you might feel a little weird or whatever, so we should do it a week later, right? Right. And so... Um, so it was uh, all for not. It was all for not twice. 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 Because Larry Bowles Brown doesn't yeah. want surgery. Let's be honest about it. Yeah, I must uh, have a deep, deep fear of it, Jesus. Well, I mean, you know, there's always, you always have a fear. I mean, like when I had my seeds done uh, and, uh, you know, the the initial radiation wasn't a problem because it's not invasive or anything like that. You just sit there while this robot goes around finding your prostate, you know. Uh, but uh, the the other one was seeds, and, you know, that... that uh, after I got over that, I mean, the thing that was bothering me about that is uh, I go in and I figure, ah, you know, they're going to sedate me. They're going to give me that, that twilight drug that puts you out. And just as you go out, it, there's this wonderful feeling, okay? 
Uh, but uh, they said, no, we're not going to put you out. And I said, why? They said, you're too old. We don't, really? you know, it, we'll put, we'd put you out if we felt that, you know, we had to. Uh, but we don't have to put you out. Uh, we can give you a, 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 a spinal. Oh, God. Well, no, I thought that that was going to just hurt and be horrible. It didn't hurt at all. They just, whatever they did, they injected into my spinal area. Next thing I know, uh, they, they're lifting me onto the, the surgery table, and I'm lying there, and they're, they're dripping me with, like, uh, heavy-duty, like, Valium or something like that that was making me feel real loopy and everything. And I said, the terrible thing about that is the guy is working on you, and you can hear everything that's going on in the room. Right? I wouldn't like that. Well, no, no but no, what you're expecting is you're gonna, it's going to be like on TV. Sponge, sutures, scalpel, hand me this, hand me that. Instead, the conversation is, so what are you doing this weekend? <laughs> and I'm going, pay attention to my goddamn yeah, uh, seeds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. my wife uh, and I had an argument last night. and uh, You know, it's stuff like that. And I'm going, this isn't surgery. This isn't like it is on TV. This isn't George Clooney, you know. <laughs> so uh, I, uh, uh, and then I, w uh, after it's over, they take me down to recovery. And I say, well, how long will recovery take? They say, oh, probably with you about three hours. So why? They said, because they gave you a spinal. You know, if, you, if, you, if, you're, if, they, if they put you out, they wake you up, and, you know, as soon as you can kind of stand up straight and there's somebody there to take you out of the hospital, they let you go. But here, you can't go until you can walk, right, and take a pee. Okay. You know, they give you this little thing to pee into to see how much you peed, and if you can go up to this level, you're okay. You can leave. Well, I, so I wake up, and I... I'm dead from the waist down, okay? That would scare me. Well, I know what it's like now to be a paraplegic. I mean, it is yeah. the most frustrating, horrible thing. I mean, in my case, I was a temporary paraplegic, but nonetheless, I had no, nothing from the waist down. And uh, I started getting really frustrated about it. I mean, I couldn't feel anything and whatever. And finally, uh, this I had this nurse, and she you got to pee up to here, you know. And I'm going, well, i got to get to the bathroom first. She says, well, that's part of it, you know. So I finally, I'm, I'm no longer dead from the waist down, and I'm, I stumble to the bathroom. And I can't pee up to that level. And I go back to her, and I go, I can't pee up to that level. She says, ah, go home. <laughs> 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 you know, yeah. I mean, it's just... But That's medicine, get get the hell out of our hospital. Yeah, but in spite of the fact that you're dead from the waist down, you know. So, well, does it uh, was it like a numb feeling or? It was like no, it was like there was nothing there. You know, it's like I didn't have legs. Oh, that'd be horrible. I mean, it fe that's how a paraplegic feels, you know. Um, and and so I, but you know, j just dead from the waist down, and I just laid there. And I was frustrated. I got cranky. I really. And how oh, how I long got, did that take to wear off? About three hours. Jesus. You know. Uh, yeah. The, 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 I never want another spinal. No, I, I would I, not let anybody do that to me. Hmm. It's not that there's anything dangerous about it. It does wear off, but while you're waiting for it to wear off, I got really cranky and mean and nasty, and you know I can't feel anything, and you know I, it, it's very frustrating. So, so but, they inject something in your spine. I don't know what they do exactly. Yeah, it's something that goes in your spine. Yeah, but I, I didn't uh. feel it. It was uh, either they numb the area or something, but it didn't. Uh, I didn't feel anything. <laughs> well, all, all I know is they put some things like I think on my back, and then for a couple of minutes, and then it was over with. And then I'm, I'm, I, I could, I couldn't tell when my legs weren't usable any longer because they had me on the surgery table uh, by that time, so I was lying down. And you know, the guy's got my legs spread, and he's shoving this thing up on my uh, 
they go they go in between do you know what we used to refer to as the tween yeah you know or the taint taint was the, the best taint. one taint taint ass taint prick you know it's just in the middle that's where they shove the thing in yeah and it's a it's a little device that's uh, that's there that they put there and then they go in from there and start inserting the seeds um, of course, you don't feel a thing because you're dead from the waist down, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, and um, the first time I was supposed to go have this done, I'm I'm all prepped. I'm in the ready room. I'm ready to go. And all of a sudden, the nurse comes to me and says, we're canceling the operation today. And I went, what? They we're canceling the operation. And I said, why? And she says, we're missing a part. Your doctor will be down to explain it. And oh about God. 15 minutes later, the doctor shows up. He says, I'm so sorry about this, but there's a thing that goes in your taint. It's it's whatever that little thing is they put there. And uh, he said they, they ordered it, but it never came. I'm going, this is a fuck. It's Mount oh Sinai. This is Mount Sinai. This isn't, uh, um, you know, uh, a hospital in rural Texas, you know. Uh, and and uh, he says, yeah, I'm really mad about this. I said, you're mad. He said, well, I'll call you tomorrow and we'll rearrange another date. So they did it a week later, finally. They did it. And I was lucky because a week later they closed down this kind of surgery because of COVID. And I wouldn't have been able to get it for a year and a half or something like that. Oh, gee, you just made it. I just made it right on the cusp, yeah. So... That's that's my history, <laughs> you know. But that be you you talk about being you know not they don't do things for you. Uh, that that's the ultimate is when they cancel it just before yeah, it's well supposed to go uh, on. So I cancel on them and they cancel on you. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wanted to get it done. You know. Hey, I've got cancer in me. Let's take care of it. You know. So. Well, now I've been reading. There's a lot of cancellations because they get ready for the surgery and one of the personnel doesn't show up because so many people are not showing up for work anymore. Oh, jeez. It's getting terrible. It's getting terrible. Uh, America. So I think we're fourth world at this point. Well, so. we can't be sick, you know. Don't get sick, folks. There's no, you know, what are they going to do? It's, it's horrible. It's terrible. But, you know, I mean, I, I don't blame my doctor for that. And the doctor was really pissed. I mean, he said, some heads are going to roll here on this one. He said, they know the parts that I need to do this. Yeah, I don't see how that could happen, you know. Yeah, but it, it, it did happen. And uh, what the hell, you know, that's, that's life. That's, you know, what, what are you going to do? So what else is happening in your life besides? Well, so you got to go back and get the thing. Go do it, will you? It's I very will, simple, will, and yeah. don't worry about the twilight drug. You'll enjoy it. You know, it it, it it's not you're not going to die. Okay, you know, not. I never heard of this one. Well, he died. What happened? Well, he was supposed to have this cataract operation, <laughs> and then they put him out, and he died. You know. <laughs> I never heard of anybody dying from a cataract operation. No, but have you had a, ever had a friend that died during surgery? Or uh, did I ever have a friend who died? I think I did, but I can't remember who. But that's because I'm almost eighty-three years old, and I don't remember anything anyway. Uh, let me see here. Somebody who died in surgery. No, I don't think I know anybody who died in surgery. Do you? No, I just know uh, of someone, uh, Rod Serling. Rod Serling, yeah. Well, also, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Muppets. Uh, Oz, what's his name? No, not, no. Uh, the pup, uh, Henson. Henson. Jim Henson. Jim Henson died uh, having an operation. Did he? Wow. Yeah, well, here, here's, the, here's the irony. He was a uh, seventh day, uh, what, what is it? What, uh, Christian scientist. Adv Adventist? No, Christian scientist. They don't believe in this sort of thing, right? You can be healed by the power of God. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, I believe that one. You'll be dead really soon. Well, okay. I'd be smarter than that. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, yeah. 
So anyway, so um, uh, 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 he, I think he went in, he had something really wrong with him, and he had to be operated on. So they operated on him, and he died. So that's Dan, uh, Dan Blocker died uh, during a gallbladder surgery, I think. Really? He was like 42. Who dies of a gallbladder operation? Yeah, that's, uh... You know? I mean, it, I mean, and something can always go wrong. I mean, let's face it, you know. Um, we put so much faith in doctors. And really, we shouldn't. Because, you know, I, my old argument was, okay, so you go to a doctor, and you're going to him for the best advice possible, and there's nothing up on his wall. They just have all his degrees, right? But they don't have a thing like, here are his scores on his test. <laughs> here is malpractice. <laughs> because you remember, folks, all you have to do is get 70% of the questions correct in order to pass. Am I right? Right. So suppose... Been at the bottom of his class. Yeah, so suppose he flunked gallbladder, but now he's doing a gallbladder <laughs> operation. <laughs> You know, you don't know what he did well in and what he didn't do well in and how he did at school. Yeah. You just see the final product, which is, uh, you know, uh, and I don't even check what schools they're from. You know, it could be the uh, University of Guam, you know, so. They should uh, show that, what they, how well they scored on things. Yeah, well, also, uh, it should be, there should be a score of, like, uh, how many people they've worked on that have died. Yeah. Yeah. So many, you know, it's amazing that you bring these things up, these people who have died from operations, because this is the kind of information that sticks to your brain. Yeah, exactly. I mean, who else died in surgery? Do you know? I'm trying to think. I remember, um, well, he didn't die during surgery, but remember Robin Williams had uh, some heart valve replaced. Uh, yeah. And he told me that was a nine-hour surgery. Really, which I can't imagine. Uh, you would think that the, you would think the surgeon would have a breakdown at some point. Pardon me for being a little. What's the word I'm looking for? A little bad about this, but Robin Williams had a nine-hour surgery on his heart, right? Mm -hmm. And then he went out and committed suicide, and ruined all that work. <laughs> I guess. You ever think about that? You know. I mean, he just it, 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 all the work that they did on him. Forget it. Didn't didn't matter, right? But he died because he uh, he had uh, this. What did he have? It was some kind of syndrome or something. Louis body dementia. Louis body dementia. Yeah. It's what, horrible. Mean, what? What? You think you're uh, Louis Armstrong or what is that? It's. Uh, it looks like you have. Parkinson's, but it's not. They actually can't diagnose it till they do an autopsy, and he virtually had holes in his brain. Really? Yeah, he was. Uh, I saw him when he came back from that. He was doing that sitcom, and he came back, and he was looked like he was in shell shock. He wasn't acting normal at all, and people that. Uh, were closer to him told me that in the few last few weeks he would like he would text you like 400 times in a day really he'd ask you what time it was every minute mm -hmm. then he had moments where he'd have clarity and like he knew he was losing his mind but he didn't know why and it, it just sounds like a total but nightmare. there's no way they can figure this out and somehow cure it or attend oh, to even it? if they could figured there's no cure for it, but they can't really tell what it is until they do an autopsy in your brain. Well, did he commit suicide as a result of this? Because he, yeah, it, yeah, because absolutely. of whatever it does to you, it made him want to commit suicide. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he had any choice, really. He was, uh, the last thing they found on his iPad, he was Googling uh, side effects from all the medications they were giving him. Yeah, well, I mean, what, what Louis body dementia? Yeah, look it up. It's L E W Y. It's a weird name. -E Louis body dementia. The W Y. Mm hmm. L E W Y. Wow. Some French guy that discovered it. Yeah, I mean, did the French guy have it? 
<laughs> Don't think you would have discovered if he had. Well, I, it's interesting. You, they couldn't tell while he was alive that he had it. No, he did. They just they knew something was severely wrong, but they didn't know what it was. Because and that's the, the, if anybody gets it, they don't know what it is till they die. There are a lot of diseases that imitate other stuff. I yeah, know this kind of uh, into, this kind of uh, is like a little like Parkinson's. Yeah. And apparently, if they give you Parkinson's medicine, that actually makes it worse. Because my uh, ex-wife Ronnie, you know, had had. Um, um, what do you call it, disease, uh, pancreatic cancer. And she had an operation, which only works about 10% of the time, but it seemed to work on her, although she eventually died of cancer. Um, but it would seem to work on her. Uh, but that operation is the kind of operation that only works about 10% of the time. So, and But the thing was that she told me at the time, yeah, this is what I wanted to say, that she had... Uh, cancer, um, but they it, 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 she had pancreatic cancer, but she had all these other symptoms, so she was going to doctors for months with all these different symptoms of what she had, and they were thinking, well, it's this or it's that, but they never thought pancreatic cancer. That's why a lot of people do die of pancreatic cancer because it's too late. Because they keep yeah, dying. Yeah, by the time you show the symptoms, it's too late. Well, no, by the time you show the symptoms, they're then diagnosing the symptoms as something else, you know. So she she went around for, for months saying, I've got this and I've got that and I don't understand this. And, and finally they said, oh, well, maybe it's pancreatic cancer. Jesus. You know. Well, that's a bad one. Oh, that's the worst. But if you get it, you can get it early on if they notice it on something, you know? Like I say, you probably should get a CT scan every month of your life, and then, you know, <laughs> they probably can see it on a CT scan. Well, I think uh, Steve Jobs, that's what he died of, and he tried to treat it holistically. He tried holistically initially, and that's probably what wound up killing him. That killed him, yeah, <laughs> if they, long. They, they say that if, he, if they had caught it at the time that he first had the symptoms, that um, uh, he probably would be alive today, you know, uh, but because they can't operate. It's a very complicated operation. I mean, they got to go in and rearrange your organs, and they, get, they remove your gallbladder. You don't need that. <laughs> and then they, they go in because it's behind something. So they got to lift everything out, and then they got to cut the cancer out, and then they got to sew you back together. And then I think her recovery was something like four or five months. I mean, it was terrible. Wow. And she went through all of that, and then eventually she came down with cancer anyway. You know, it had spread somewhere else. So, you know, I mean, but... but uh, that, so she might have lived if she would have had a proper diagnosis. Oh, here we go, here we go. Uh, Bill Hicks. Bill Hicks. Bill Hicks, pancreatic cancer. Uh, he went to a doctor, and the doctor said, you got six months to live. Go home and say goodbye to everybody. Um, and I saw him during that period of time. He knew he was dying. And he died uh, three years after his Letterman appearance that got yeah. clipped. Yeah, well, he, uh, I, uh, you know, I saw him at the uh, punchline. It was in the, the back room with him. And he said, uh, I'm quitting the business. And I said, what? He said, yeah, I'm quitting the business. I'm getting out of, out of comedy. And I said, why? I said, you're, you know, you're one of the funniest people alive. You know, this is like, this would like be like Picasso saying, I'm never going to paint again, you know? And um, so many other comedians had said that to me, I wouldn't have said, hey, <laughs> why? I might have said, good idea. Um, <laughs> But he, uh, he, he knew he was dying, and he just was going to go home to Texas and be with his mother and die. Well, that's what, that's the ultimate irony. You start, when things start to go great in show business, then you get a fatal disease. Yeah, yeah. And I remember when I, I heard that he had died, I was at, uh, where was I? It was at 
uh, comedy club here in New York or something, just hanging out with, or was hanging out with somebody. I don't know. I just heard about it. Somebody said, did you hear Bill Hicks is dead? So immediately, the first person I called was my friend Shecky. I said, guess what about Bill Hicks? And he said, what did he do now? <laughs> you know. Uh, and and uh, he died. I said he died. He said what? I said yeah, he's dead. And then he went. They went. He went and told Dave. And the next thing you know, Dave is feeling horrible because they had not. You know, they kicked him off. They they didn't kick him off the show. He just didn't. They didn't play his set on the show. So mm-hmm. it was uh, uh, it was a terrible thing. Terrible thing. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here. Yes, we have. He's like Bill Hicks. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll talk to you next week. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Nah. Nah. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Larry Bubbles Brown, always a, a pleasure to talk to Larry, and he's so upbeat, and we get into such upbeat topics as death, and then other times we talk about death, and some other times we even just talk about death. So anyway, uh, let's see here. What somebody, uh, Charlie Wallace said, my cataract surgery was a breeze, no problem whatsoever. Yeah, I tried to tell him the same thing, Charlie, and he didn't believe me. But when confronted with the paperwork saying, if you die, you won't sue us. Well, if you're dead, you can't sue him anyway. Okay, all righty? Okay, all right. All right, all right, all right. Anyway, uh, it is uh, it is Friday. Uh, I'm having little breathing problems today. I, you know, I really think it's what they're doing here. Uh, because I looked out on the ledge of our um, our apartment where they were working yesterday, and there's all this dust and all this debris, okay? And um, I think that's what's what's kind of causing my breathing uh, problems. But anyway, I'm you know or either that I've got I've got cancer. No, but they did a CT scan on me and on my chest, and they didn't find any cancer. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's just getting old. It's just getting goddamn friggin' old. Anyway, let me start admitting all the people that are waiting to come on, which is not uh, not a, quite a few of them here. About five uh, people, right? Okay, all righty. Let me see here. There they are, as a matter of fact. There's uh, Jeff, and there's uh, Alan, and there is Josh, and there is Charlie. Hello, Charlie. What is that? What does that say on your... Uh, today. My favorite people call me dad. My favorite people call me dad. Isn't that nice? Hi, dad. <laughs> yeah. Nine. How many kids do you have? Three. Three. Oh. Okay. And uh, how how much are they spaced apart? Two years apart. Two years. We planned it that way. <laughs> really. Yeah. And did you want three? I mean, was three the number I you only wanted two? But somebody. Insisted on a third. So. <laughs> and if she wants it, you got to do it, right? Yeah. How long were you married? Fifteen years. Wow. And then all of a sudden one day it went sour? Yeah, well, more like one week, one month. <laughs> what? You mean, here, 15 years, you know, you're married for 15 years, you'd figure, well, I don't know. How old were you when you got married? Oh, I was pretty old. What was that? I was 34. Really? Because yeah. what I was going to say is when you get married, you, you usually get married young, and by the oh. time you reach 15 years, you've, you're two different people. You that, know? Well, that kind of happened anyway. Really? <laughs> Some of us don't grow up right away. <laughs> oh, you're blaming her for that? Oh, I'm blaming me too. Yeah, yeah. I was a late bloomer. Yeah. Did you get mm. married again? No, that was my second marriage. That was your second marriage. Yeah, so and I haven't made that mistake. What happened to? The, did you have any kids in the first marriage? No kids in the first. Uh, oh, marriage. okay. I don't want. I don't want you to be another like. Uh, oh, who? Uh, who uh, 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 
uh, what do you call it? Um, Not like Herschel Walker. I don't or, have kids. Or, or Elon, Elon, <laughs> Elon Musk. He's got like nine kids. Yeah, cool. Mm. Of course, he's rich enough. He, he can is. afford it, you know. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe not in a few weeks after this whole Twitter thing, you know. But uh, did you want to say something, Alan? No, I was just had my finger in the air. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have this finger in the air. How do no, you like yeah, that? No, it's, huh? it, it's going to surprise us all when Elon Musk makes Twitter the number one profitable company in the world. It won't happen. It will surprise me if that happens. It, yeah, that would surprise me too. Uh, hopefully he'll buy Fox News next. Yeah, well, uh, Rupert would not will not get rid of that. I'm watching a documentary on Rupert Murdoch uh, that was done by CNN in six parts. It's very microscopic. I mean, every inch of his life, mm. every problem, everything, and uh, it's a very interesting story. I mean. If you saw this, if you don't want to see the documentary, just watch any episode of Succession, and you pretty much got it, okay? Because the whole thing is basically about the kids and who's going to, you know, who's going to survive him, who's going to be the leader. And they're all, they have, so he had them all vying for position all their lives. And his second wife hated it, just hated it. He thought She thought it was very destructive to the children. Um but they, you know, and so I looked at Marjorie and I went, this is succession. I didn't realize that's what they base succession on. You know, so. Anyway, uh, what the hell. And then you watch it and you say, what a dick uh, uh, Rupert Murdoch is. What a conniving bastard. And, and you uh, walk away feeling that you've always been right about him. You know. Uh, but anyway. Hi, Josh. How you doing? Doing good. How you doing? Yeah. How you, what mm -hmm. you been doing? Anything? Uh, nothing out of the ordinary, I guess. Routine. Really? Okay. All right. Uh, any Anything in the news that's been uh, floating your boat? Um, I know uh, there's been a few things going on, I guess. The uh, uh, Trump team lost, you know, uh, again at the 11th Circuit with their special master deal so that uh, district court judge that set all that up has been pretty much put down three times now. Uh, I think the first time in the 11th Circuit on one question and then the Supreme Court turning down for a stay and then they go back to the 11th Circuit for something else and they lost again. And they pretty much, you know... And then they had to give up his uh, tax records. His, uh, yeah, you know, and they pretty much ripped that judge pretty good in their opinion you know so um well she was like just doing idiot. she was just serving her master basically yeah probably yeah. yeah so i mean you know that it's not you know that's uh not good for him i mean that's good you know overall mm -hmm. i think you know that they were right all along you know i mean the justice department's been pretty fair they've been following the law if you don't like the fact that he's being investigated i mean it's okay but it's legit, so you know um, that's good. You know, uh, I think that's uh, that's good for people who were, you know, who waver a little bit some time with the judiciary. You just have to remember, there's a whole lot of judges on the in the federal courts, and just because one of them is a piece of garbage, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't mean that you know you can't have faith in the American system. I mean, you put enough people in any job there's going to be a couple pieces of garbage there well especially if they were pick, picked by donald trump well, yeah you know, right it's you kind know, of so. interesting though that that same kind of loyalty that she had to trump doesn't follow through to the appointments on the supreme court they well, seem right. to be, all be I mean, voting against him yeah yeah so i mean that's which is what i thought from the beginning i mean um that's why i didn't particularly you know, worry over it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I knew that those folks would have a sort of judicial philosophy that would not um, line up with what a lot of you guys would like, and mm. me in some cases. Yeah. You know, but I but I didn't feel then, and I still don't now, and I think there's some proof of it that they would just be, you know, purely, uh, you know, what's what's the case before us? 
You know, U.S. v. Trump, all Trump, we're good. You know, let's break yeah. for lunch. Yeah, I mean, our worst fear, I mean, Charlie, I'm sure you have this fear about the Supreme Court, and it doesn't seem to be true. It seems to be that they, so far, all the things that have come before them regarding Trump and his uh, taxes and, you know, this current uh, judgment that he can't have a special master, it's all going against him, which probably he's sitting there going, have they no loyalty? I got them their jobs and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, that wasn't the reason you gave them their jobs to say you could go out and commit a crime and get away with it, you know? Well, right. I mean, they, yes, yeah, so, I mean, they, you know, they've done the right thing there, but I, I mean, I, I thought, you know, during their confirmation, or, you know, when they were appointed and everything, that I think that a lot of people were under the impression that Trump was using them to get what he wanted. And I always thought it was the opposite. They were using Trump to get what they wanted, yeah. which was a job on the Supreme Court. But my question to you, because you, know? you, you follow the Supreme Court, you're, you know, that's one of the things you enjoy watching. Uh, would you say the people that were appointed by Trump were the best people we could get for that job? I would say not, pro you know, probably not. Yeah. I mean, no. I mean, you know, because they're not people that I would have appointed. Um, well, but I'm saying just you know, for, but pu I, in, in, for pure qualifications, <laughs> do they did they have anything going? Well, I it? think they were qualified. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they had, you know, sound legal training and education and mm -hmm. experience and and things of that nature. I just don't happen to agree with them on, on stuff. I mean, some of it, I, I sometimes do Look, I have some conservative tendencies when it comes to separation of powers and things like that. I mean, you know, one of the things that will, you know, is going to come up that'll surprise people is, you know, this student debt forgiveness case, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, listen, I am one of the people that will get the $10,000 taken off, right? Mm -hmm. But it, it's probably going to go to the court, and it's probably going to lose. And I have to be honest with you, it probably should. And that has nothing to do with how I feel about it, okay? It, it's my money, too, and it, I'm not saying it's well, not good When you good say it's going to lose, you mean— Why do you think it should lose? Because I don't think the President of the United States has the power to do that. That's, that's the only reason. Oh. I think Congress has the power to do that, but I don't think the President of the United States has the power or necessarily should have the power to say, cancel. I mean, I, I'm just saying, I'm trying to think where they're going to draw their argument from that he does. I mean, it, you know, it has to be a constitutionally granted power. It can't just, the argument can't be, what's well, good for America, or it's the right <laughs> thing to do. I mean, I know all that sounds ridiculous, but that's... Yeah, but you know something? The Bi legal argument. Bi Biden, Biden wins either way. He wins if he can do it, and he yeah. he wins if he can't do it, because if he can't do it, yeah. then I'll people like that. yourself and people like Charlie, <laughs> who are going to get themselves a nice little check, are now going to blame the Republicans for not being right. able to get it. Right. So Which it's a win-win for Biden. So, Politically, it's not a bad move for Joe Biden or maybe even the Democratic Party mm -hmm. at large because it moves the issue finally to the forefront, right? So I have no problem with that. But I'm just saying I can understand legally in a few months or whatever this – I haven't looked at the timeline yet. You know, I know there's a stay on it right now. I mean, I, I can certainly see this particular court – being very skeptical that the executive branch should have that kind of power, which, by the way, if you think about it, is exactly the opposite of what someone like Donald Trump would think when he appointed them, because Trump thinks that the executive should be all powerful. Right? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why he put those people on the bench, so they would do anything he wanted, or at least in his mind, that's what he thought. You know, but like I said, they didn't think that they used him just as much as he thought he was using them. Mm -hmm. He's an idiot. I mean, you know, I mean, but I, I just I don't see those members thinking that the executive, mm -hmm. whoever it is, has the power to even though he runs the, the, the federal government, the executive branch, 
telling, you know, the Department of Education that they don't have to collect this money, that it's just gone. I mean, there have been like debt forgivenesses before for all kinds of different things and defense contractors get let out from underneath their bank, you know what I'm saying? But Congress did those things. Congress does those things. I mean, when we gave bailout money to the banks, Mm -hmm. George Bush didn't just say, they get a billion dollars, they get a bit, they, right? He signed legislation that Congress passed that said that. Mm -hmm. And he fought for it, and it maybe was his, he, he architect of the plan, right? But Congress passed it. I mean, that's all I'm saying is that, you know, legally and constitutionally the way that it works I, I think it's sketchy I thought it was sketchy well, you know you know what's kind of interesting but it, I get it. what I what's kind of interesting to me uh, is the uh, whole notion of some people that why should we forgive those debts and my answer is you know these people got a college degree which made them go out and be slightly larger wage earners than they would have been without that college degree and that resolved itself in more taxes being paid and uh, and whatever talent they got as a result of that college education was being applied to the betterment of this country so i mean what's wrong about taking care of people's college education And, and just you know like so that i'm clear in my opinion, nothing. Yeah. I think it is the exact right thing to do. Actually, I, I think it should go a lot further. Mm-hmm. And I have a lot of personal experience with this and know a lot of other people. I have no problem with the policy. Mm-hmm. You know I, mean? I mean, I'm serious. Yeah. And I'll be a dire- and my wife will be a direct benefactor of such. Yeah. I just don't know that I the way be too. went about was going to, you know, hold up, mm-hmm. you know. Now, if Congress passes it, then it's a hundred percent legit, and it's great. You know, like, but I agree. I mean, I I think money was given to banks and corporations mm-hmm. and lots of other people, and mm-hmm. and 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 forgiveness for in, during COVID and all that. I mean, so it's the it's the damned people's turn, if nothing else, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm a hundred percent on board with the idea. I mean, I just don't want anyone to think that I came on and said I didn't think that. And this. Republican nonsense about, you know, and that's that's where it comes from, about how people shouldn't deserve it. And these people went to Harvard and now they make eight hundred million dollars a year. And, and all. that's such a horse. That's horse shit. You know, that's some Ted Cruz lying to you. <laughs> horse shit. And he'd be the first one to cast his ten thousand dollar check. You know, and he can stick it right up his ass as far as I'm concerned. But. I mean, so I like the policy. It just, you know, yeah. but I do think it will lose when it goes to the court. Yeah. By the I way, we have wh- what? That's I hope he's wrong. Yeah, uh, uh, we I have mean, uh, we have Bree in Malaysia, ladies and gentlemen, and he's in some kind of store. It looks like it's a yeah. store run by Etsy. You know. Um, yeah. What are you? Where are you? Well, this uh, this particular uh, store has a lot of the local products. It's uh-huh. it's known for the local products. Mm-hmm. So I'm just uh, just having a look at what what the you know what's on offer. But uh, you know it would be gifts that I would send back for Christmas oh, or you know oh, that I would oh, back to the United back. States. Oh, here we yeah. have an American passport. Yeah, yeah. American oh. passport holder. A pa- American <laughs> passport holder. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy! That's uh, that'll cost you. Guess how much that'll cost you? Twenty cents. Twenty wow. cents? I was gonna say five. Twenty bucks. cents. <laughs> you know, I went on to Amazon yeah. yesterday to buy. It some... was five ringgit. Now it's one. Really? See, here's what happens. I went on to cost uh, Amazon uh, twenty cents y- yesterday, and I wanted to buy some stuff I normally buy. Some of it isn't there anymore. I mean, it's amazing how many of them weren't there. There's some creamer I buy. They don't have that. There's some other stuff that I buy they didn't have. And what they did have had raised about $5 in price. I mean, Amazon is got some mm. kind of trouble going for it. I don't know what it is, you know. 
So. Chasing those greenbacks. Chasing the greenbacks, yeah. Well, you know, the, I, uh, I get the Whopper Jr. here, and for a long time, it was six ringgit and 90 cents. Uh, and now it's eight ringgit, 80 cents. Now, so what's a, how much ringgit. is a ringgit in American? It's about four ringgit to a dollar, usually maybe 4.3, 4.3. You yes. just figure four to so kind four of to a dollar. Out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. About right, two bucks for a Whopper. <clears throat> yeah, two bucks for a Whopper. Is that about right? I don't know. Yeah. I haven't been to Burger That's King right. in maybe 30 years. Whopper Jr. Whopper Jr. Oh, I get the Whopper Jr. Yeah. Why do you get the Jr.? I mean, you would think if you went into I Burger don't want King, all, you'd yeah, want, I don't need the whole thing. You'd want to get something called the Whopper, you know. The Whopper yeah, is Whopper big. for Jr. You know what I didn't like about the Whopper? It was it never I they always I think they 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 maybe grilled them, but then they put them in a microwave to warm them up. Wow. And I just never like their burgers. I almost <laughs> like McDonald's burgers better because when because when they were fresh, they were okay, you know. So anyway, I went into this. Uh, you know, speaking of fresh, I, I was at this McDonald's. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, and and I got a fillet of fish. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I ended up going back and getting another one because I thought the first one was so good it tasted like they breaded it in the back, and and so after I thought oh no this is a fluke I got the second one it was I ate three, I went and got three of them because it it tasted like they were breading it in the back, and now I've gone back subsequently to that same one no they've never had it that way again but boy the day I was there I took pictures of it I couldn't believe well how you know what good happens the they put, fish they, was they, they, no here's what happens so they make them. And then they put them under those lights to keep them warm for a while. So if you can get a burger, for instance, or a filet of fish or whatever, when it just comes out of the back room, yep. you're going you're gonna to have some fairly yeah. decent eating. But let mm -hmm. those things sit under the yeah. lights for five minutes and they're, they're a waste. You know, what is that? The fan? No. Oh. That's a fan. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Locally. Yeah, you need a fan here. It's hot. Yeah. How hot is it? This is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it's usually between uh, 80 and 95 here. Mm -hmm. Usually between 80 and 95. Well, we've been joined by Kevin. Hello, Kevin. I don't know what it is. When he starts, he has yeah. all that noise in his picture. And then yep. as he's on, it goes away. Oh, and I don't know what could possibly be causing that. So pretty. You know? There it's, know. See, it's starting to disappear now. Pretty yeah. soon it won't even be there. You know? So. Hmm. And Jeff, how you doing? Good. Good? Yeah. Oh, okay. I went to see my dentist today. Really? You know what he did? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean nothing? <clears throat> and charged to $300. And yeah. Of course, he looked a little bit. He, they cleaned it up around and said, "We'll see you in six months again." Yeah. Really? I guess it's okay. Yeah, yeah. So you get a bill for it, though. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I always the thing I never liked about the dentist was you always went in and got insulted. You know, like. Uh, have you yeah. been? Have yeah, you been, you're not crushing your teeth. You're not enough. flossing enough. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Always, you gotta use a certain toothpaste. And the other, <laughs> the other thing is, they want you to like come in four times a year to get your teeth clean when your insurance will only pay for two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mine only yeah. does it twice a year. Yeah. Really? It should only be twice a year. So I just keep say, oh, saying, yeah. I'll call you in a couple of weeks. And I just wait, and then I do it about twice a year, you know. And this time, I've been brushing my teeth every up? day, maybe twice a day, all right? I want to go back and tell her, boy, you have not been, uh, there's a lot of tartar there. You haven't been doing it, you know. <laughs> you know, but uh, so that's it. Yeah. And uh, let me see here. What? Uh, um, so anyway, um, 
Uh, I, I, well, I don't want to get into that. I been having some problems with my lawyer. Oh no! Ooh. No, but what happened is I get this bill every month. They slip it on under my door of what I owe for rent. Okay, and they have the the, the yeah. rent that they think it's supposed to be like twenty two twenty five, and then it says uh, but credit so much, and then it comes out to the five hundred that we're paying. All right, now that's fine. And I know why they're doing it, because probably at the end of the year, they can go to the government and say, hey, we lost this much money or, or whatever. Do you pay less than I do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I pay less than anybody in America. Yeah. Okay. My but God. Anyway. I, I don't understand. That's impossible. Yeah. But anyway. Of course, I, you had to go through hell. Yeah. But then I get a, uh, then every month on it, it says $2,500 in arrears. And I'm going, we didn't paid every single thing we had to pay. So then my, my uh, uh, what do you call it, my uh, a business Lawyer. manager, my accountant, says to me, you know where I think this money went? We gave him $2,500 at the beginning of this thing for him to send to the, to the, um, uh, to the landlord. Uh, five, uh, what two thousand? Uh, check for two thousand to pay the month's rent plus three other months' rent before it. Okay, and then five hundred dollars as an, a deposit. All right, as a, a security deposit, and we sent that to the lawyer because he had to then send it on to their lawyer. But this thing has constantly been on there, and we didn't know what it was for. And he says that that's probably what it's for. So we then checked with the lawyer, and he checked with his accountant, and the, they never cashed the check. <laughs> now, I, I, am I wrong, but isn't the lawyer supposed to check on this to make sure it got uh, they paid? Don't. Huh? Supposed to, yeah. 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 Oh, this. You, you, you have to check them. Huh? You got to check them. Well, I mean, yeah. finally, I mean, we figured this thing out and he oh, never, he never, they had it on the books that they had never cashed the check and the lawyer didn't do anything about it. He didn't even think about it. Yeah. You know. uh, do me a favor, Bree. Would you turn off your audio or just uh, mute, you, mute your audio because there's too there much go. ambient sound going on there. Yeah. So. <clears throat> You know, I mean, at least I know where that $2,500, you know, is supposed to come from. But, uh, it's, you know, it's certainly, it's not in my pocket, you know, and it's probably in the lawyer's pocket. So he's, uh, <laughs> we, we wrote him and told him, do something about this, you know. Get that arrears off of there, because, you know, we paid it, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm dealing with something similar now, Alex, where I... I had signed a one-year lease and because my visa is only one year, which is a little crazy. I don't know why the government does this, but so I had to sign a new lease and then he wanted to raise the rent. So my deposit had to go up. So I had to pay the rent plus the extra deposit. Yeah. And he, he still hasn't signed the new lease. And I'm four weeks away from knowing, am I moving or am I staying or what, you know? So. No. I'm just assuming everything is fine and that we're just going to stay there, you know. Yeah. But, but anyway, he's in Malaysia, ladies and gentlemen, and it, it, he he pay he only pays uh, three cents a month in uh, <laughs> Malaysian money. Hey, look who's here again! He was on last night, and here he is again. It's uh, Bathtub Brian. Oh well, Ray Renati has joined Thanks, us. Man. Hello. But here's a uh, uh, Bathtub Brian. Now, I love Brian Neary, but if he calls, then I got the problem I had last night. What is that? Is that is that a live Santa Claus or is that just a mechanical Santa Claus? Mechanical. So my father used to have a saying for this, and it was, gee, Christmas is at our throats again. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, don't give Santa a hard time. I mean, it, this is this is how uh, Kevin pays for his Harley <laughs> by playing Santa every year. Well, he doesn't. Make, you're not going to do Santa this year, are you, Kevin? Uh, I'm doing it once for my daughter's concert Thursday. Right. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
But you, you, you used to do it every year. That was a money maker yeah. for you. Yeah, the Harley. Why did you stop doing it? Your health or what? COVID. 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 Just COVID. <laughs> okay. Uh, snotty little kid. Snotty little kid. Yeah, those little. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they probably still are passing it. You know what happened? My my uh, my friend Shecky went to Thanksgiving with his brother who came into town, spends a lot of money, very wealthy guy, maybe got a billion dollars, you know. And he comes in and he buys 15 of his family. They all get together at this hotel and they have a big, beautiful meal and all kinds of food and, and so and on COVID. and so forth. And then uh, they went home and many of them got COVID. Oh, God. Yeah, his brother got COVID. And he was sick too. He was really sick, but he did one of the home tests, and it didn't uh, didn't say he had COVID. So he went down to a. I have to check back with him. He went down to this uh, walking clinic or whatever and did a test, and they were supposed to get back to him on it. So, but I mean, imagine you go for Thanksgiving dinner, and what did you get? Did you have turkey? Yeah. What else did you have? COVID. You know. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The East, the East Coast is really high transmission right now. Why? It, it always starts on the East Coast. I don't know, because it's a lot colder, I think. A lot more people yeah. are inside gathering. Yeah, well, I'm, I, haven't, I, haven't, coughing. I haven't gone out at all. You know, I don't go out. I don't take walks yeah. or anything lately. It's I know cold. the feeling. It's too makes cold. Makes me very nervous. Well, I just don't do not because it makes me nervous. You know, I mean, let's face it. I've had all the all the shots, all the vaccines, yeah. and you wear a mask. Yeah, I guess I feel you know, I feel like I feel like I'm a dog. Has he had all his shots? <laughs> I, don't get it. I think if you have your shots, if you're up to date on your shots, and you wear a mask. Where there's crowds, um, mm -hmm. you know, most people that I know that do that don't get COVID. I haven't got COVID yet. I, I did. Cold. I got a cold. I have all the shots. I have all the shots. I have, uh, I wore a mask all the time, and I got COVID. Uh, okay, well, it's not 100. percent Well, no, you can still get COVID. Uh, the, the the vaccine doesn't prevent you from getting COVID, but it prevents you from getting a bad case of COVID. Yeah. You know, I didn't. I had a very, very mild case. Yeah. But ever since I've had it, I have the worst insomnia, and they can't figure out how to get rid mm -hmm. of it. I have to take pills every night. And I think uh, Ray thinks he's now an actor. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think I'm an. What? The long COVID gave you the I'm an actor delusion. Yeah. Uh, oh, I Joke, see. Joking with you, Ray. Yeah. Act like no, it, that's all right. Act like you have that's COVID. Right. Come on. You know. I got the COVID. <laughs> that's Lovid, boy. That's the miracle and drug. And scene, you know. You know but, uh, yeah, Paxlovid is the miracle <laughs> drug for. Well, they're saying some stuff about Paxlovid, though. That uh, Paxlovid. You know, it's like the ounce of prevention <laughs> is uh, is is not worth a pound of cure in this case. That that the Paxlovid does cause a lot of side effects. Uh, and Marjorie did not tolerate it well. I tolerated it fine, but she didn't. Mm. I, I'll bet you can take any pill except uh, uh, your pregabalin fine, but and she probably can't take most pills fine, right? No, no. I'm the one that's very sensitive to almost like oh, really? anything like pregabalin or uh, yeah. if I take a... Uh, just did a she little... take the whole... I know the doctor split the dose for you on... On the Paxlovid, did she did he split the dose on for her too? Well, yeah, the reason was, is that if you're over seventy five, it has, it can have adverse effects on the kidneys. One of the components of Paxlovid, so yes. they're like two pills you take or something at a time. Well, he, you yep. don't take one of those, and you still right. get the effect of the Paxlovid, but it doesn't impact your. Uh, your kidneys. So they're, so they're two different antiviral. Why drugs. is it all the time on this program all we talk about is medicine? <laughs> yeah. I just got my oil changed today. It was really dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I got air on my tires. Oh, that's another thing. The person who does your oil probably says you really should do this more often. You mm -hmm. know, always. Hey, look who's here, folks. 
so, uh, somebody who doesn't make it to the show very Whoa. often, it's, hey, it's Patrick, Patrick. Blazik. Hi. 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 How you doing? I'm alive and kicking and all that. Whoa. Hey, listen, I wanted to I ask remember you. you. You're a Star Wars fan, right? Uh, and uh, did you have you watched Randor? No, I have not. You should. It, it's it's my life is more valuable than that piece of shit. <laughs> show. Ooh. Well, how do you know it's a piece of shit if you haven't watched it? I I have friends who are even more diehard than me mm -hmm. that told me just fucking wait until you're sick on a weekend and you can kind of fall asleep and wake up. Uh, they said the first two episodes were so awful that it took one of my friends four days to no, watch I, I agree with that, but by the time you get to the end, it's very good. Yeah. It's like the Star Wars universe if they did a espionage thriller. It... I, I don't know, man. It, it it sounds like it's slower than uh, me trying to walk. The so. beginning is very slow. I have to agree. I, I only got to about the third episode and gave up on it. And then I had nothing to do one day, so I went back to it. And I said, this thing got better. You know, It, it might be like that, but yeah. No, I, I right now life is, is worse, <laughs> more like taking a shit that sort of thing mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I'll, uh, I'll wait well that's a uh, healthy way of looking at life uh, yeah. <laughs> a good shit is always a good thing a good shit is always a thing and and <laughs> and what's the doggy's name again what's that no, uh, uh, foxy foxy Fo foxy foxy yeah why do people name their dogs uh, 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 as another animal does she know that her name isn't uh she was named by the breeder, and we never changed it. Oh, I see. Okay. Or no. dog doesn't even have a smile on its face. <laughs> you know something? People say, oh, look, my cat's smiling at me. Yeah, right. And I'm going, <laughs> really? I'm sorry. That's the same expression your cat has all the time. Right. <laughs> you know? Animals do not make expressions with their faces. You. Oh, this one does. No, 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 no. You, <laughs> you impose that on them. Yeah, when you offer them scallops for Thanksgiving, the dog's like, no, I'll pass. <laughs> well, that's that's oh, Jeff. That's so over at Jeff's house where they have scallops right. on Thanksgiving. Oh, I, sounds good to me. What did, you, what did you do for Thanksgiving, um, I, Patrick? Uh, when I were by my cousins, mm -hmm. and they were... Maybe fifteen of us, mm -hmm. and it was it was fine. That's great. Sounds nice. Yeah. There were fifteen at at uh, the thing that uh, Shecky went to, and he got and, and they all got yeah. COVID. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't get it though, right? Is none of saying? us. Um, none of us really. I I don't think any of us have gotten it. I was sick like two months ago, but it was. Like a weekend bug is what I had, and sniffled, and I didn't have a fever or anything, yeah. no chill, just you know, so I don't know. By the way, there's a, lot, there's a lot of other things other than COVID going around. By, by the way, don't you all wish that we all had Wi Fi as good as Bree has right now in that mall? <laughs> because this picture hasn't broken up once, nope. and it looks new, really good. My, what? My new iPhone, like your iPhone 13, has high-speed 5G, and it comes out like that. Yeah. Oh. yeah. That That's isn't 5G. High-speed 5G does. Yeah, but I don't know if this is... Is that 5G that you're using, uh, uh, Bree? It, it is? Yeah, yeah. it's five, yeah. five thumbs up. I don't know what yep. that was. Mm. Five. That, that's the big difference when you're, when you're walking around. 5G yeah. is really good at a good picture i don't know it's... yeah yeah that place is huge whatever it is yeah yes That's i think the... if you walk through that you get a, a, a ct scan alex you can go through it once a month <laughs> to that arch yeah what shithole country is he in he's in uh he's in malaysia. What, malaysia malaysia but where malaysia kuala lumpur 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in the, what is called the Klang Valley. The state is called Selangor. So really? it's a little south of KL. But yeah, we, I'm still on the the train lines, you know, the LRT. Is that a bookstore? It's uh, huge. Yeah, it is. Wow. They've, they have this wonderful uh, books wall. It's just amazing, you know. What is that? I just love it here. What is that? Bookstore. Bookstore. Is it it's book, a bookstore. It's a bookstore. Wow. It's just... Yeah, it's really massive. Ah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, anyway, uh, t uh, turn off your audio there, Bree. Uh, yeah, you can hear the... We're getting all the Christmas music, and I'm getting a yeah. rash. You know? <laughs> we Jews do not take to Christmas music that well. Oh, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I had a friend by the name of Michael Pritchard. who was a comedian in San Francisco. And Michael, uh, I have to start this story by saying, was at one time, he was a recovered alcoholic, all right? So now we're at, uh, they, they get a bunch of us to go down to Union Square in San Francisco and sing Christmas songs. And they asked me if I would do it, and I said, oh, okay, you know, I, uh, uh, I'll, I'll be a good Joe when it comes to this kind of thing, so... So I go to this thing, uh, and uh, we start. We're up there, and we start singing, and there you know, jingle bells, jingle bells. Well, I'm fine with that, right? And uh, you know, uh, but then all of a sudden, it's um, silent night, holy night, all, and you know, when it gets around yon virgin, mother and child, I'm sorry, I just can't do it. I'm a Jew. I'm afraid I'm going <laughs> to burst into flame. You know, if I sing that, so I start humming it. And Michael Pritchard, who at least was another five feet taller than I am, looks down at me and goes, come on, Alex, couldn't sing, it couldn't hurt. And I look back at him and I said, Michael, have a drink, it couldn't hurt. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I, it was just something about singing Christmas carols that I cannot do. Yes. So, kind of like this. Uh, 20 years ago, my father died, and he had a, a living trust, living will. Mm -hmm. And my sister and I went to the Bank of San Diego. He was in San Diego. And they brought in one of their bank officers so we could get the money out. And we had to put our hand on the Bible and raise <laughs> our right hand or left hand or something. And my sister, we, we finished this. And the guy says, are you going to put your hand on the Bible? I said, no, we're Jewish. And he didn't know what to think. He said, just just do it for the sake of the thing. I'm like, okay. Put my hand, and my sister says, do you know that you had your wrong hand on the Bible and the other hand was in the air? And I'm like, nope, didn't even pay attention. That's well, stupid. I, I, your that, hand on the Bible. I don't think they'd be allowed to do that today. Uh, probably not. It, it, well, it was more than 20 years, 1992, 30 years No, ago. wait a minute. Now, which Bible was it? Was it the Old Testament or the New Testament? <laughs> I don't know. No, if it was the, they had in the bank. Well, if you were the, if it was the Old Testament, you'd be fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the Torah is based on the Old Testament. Well, no, the, 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 you know, it's. Um, yeah, well, who knows? I don't know. Well, no, it's it the. Just it just seems strange. You know, we had the documents and that said that the money's now ours. And the other banks that we went to, my father banked at eight different banks. The other banks that we banked at, that he banked at, you know, they just wanted the documents. We signed hey. them and they wrote us a check. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bank of San Diego wanted us to put our hand on a Bible and raise our other hand and say, I swear that. Yeah. Focus, focus. Well, what is that car? Well, obviously, huh. it's a car in trouble. Uh -huh. What wow. the hell? Where's Jack Bishop? It's a piece of artwork, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, oh, was by that the... Michael Pritchard? Was that Michael Pritchard, the guy who writes the kids about how to raise your teenagers, the books about how to raise your well, teenagers? Well, you know, yeah, I think he probably did. It, it sounds like yeah. him. It sounds like him. Uh, you know, yeah. but, but he he, he uh, are wearing the same shirt. He went to a hospital once, and. Really? Um, with, for children. What, what did I hear that he leaned down at a kid and said, you know, you're going to die soon. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. And he thought he was wow. being nice about it or something like that, and he wasn't, you know. What? 
Yeah, yeah, and something like that, you know, or a question about how does it feel to be, you know, dying. Oh no, I know what it was. Don't worry, kid. You're gonna meet God soon. That was it. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah that was you know, it. it. If he was in Texas, the kid would say, "You're gonna meet him soon," or he'd pull out a gun at him <laughs> under the car and shoot the guy. Yeah. yeah. That's what I love about Texas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, right, uh, 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 Brian is somehow in in a foggy daze there. I don't know why he's yeah. where he went or what he's doing. How you doing there tonight, is. Brian? Back to Brian. Brian? Yeah. How you doing? Oh, Alex, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody ever asked, so you know. But you don't ask yeah. me because then I'll tell you, oh God, my I have a, a, oh, yeah. a canker sore on my tongue today. And I'm pre uh, I'm pretty excited because a friend of mine was involved with an auction down in Maryland. Mm -hmm. And he was able to get. Can you see these? You know what it is. You have it on on that foggy thing. You, you know on that. Well, it's, yeah. I, I think the zoom is is on that. You blur out the background, so when you show something like that, it doesn't show up. Right. Well, now you, yeah, there's. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we oh, go. Oh, it's a drum or a coffin. What? Drums, but yeah, short coffin, whatever. Fuck it. Well, wait a minute. So he went. <laughs> where did he get those? I got them at an auction. <clears throat> I built. I I I'm I'm in, I'm a I'm a big drummer, and I play with the Philadelphia Brigade Band, uh, Civil War reenactment band, blah 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 blah. I built these things. Then these come along, and they show up at an auction, and it's like two thousand dollars worth of custom drums. Wow. So I put a bid in. I get them for like two hundred bucks, and I go, "Oh, I, I didn't have to do any of this shit. Cool. All, all I had to do was wait." But of course, that was years later. Yeah, I mean, look, look at them. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow. Nice. Well, wait a minute, uh, 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 Josh. Um, you rum uh, pum pum. Well, you, you're you're mm -hmm. always interested in the Civil War. Do you have any question to ask this guy who reenacts uh, the Civil War? <laughs> well, nothing in particular. I mean, uh, where, where does he live at? New yeah, Jersey. I mean, yeah. New Jersey. Lives in New Jersey. Oh, New Jersey. Yeah, I play with the Philadelphia Brigade Band, <clears throat> um, Second Brigade that showed up in the. Um, so, do you dress up like you're in the Civil War? We do. Yes. Really? Wow. We should have you come on some night dressed in the outfit. Yeah. God damn it! Whatever you want, I'll do it. There you go. And 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 to be honest with you, you know, we go out there and, and we gig a lot. Those guys really do. So you know, every couple of weeks I'm out there doing a parade or whatever. Really? With, with these guys. So, yeah, yeah. So is well, that that much of a call for us? Well, there's quite a lot of reenactment. I mean, there's a lot of the a lot of the larger sites. I have them on anniversaries and things like that, you know. Yeah. It's, it's pretty popular. Cool. Yeah. <coughs> who do we Sounds lose? Fine. Who do we lose here? We lost. We're nothing more than the community plan. That's all it is. Do, yeah. you, do you wear that you carry the Kevin gun and stuff, and if Trump is seen, you fire at him or no? What? Never mind. I'm, it's a bad joke. It's his I Trump. It's his, it's, it's his bad Trump joke for the night. That's mm -hmm. right. Do you, do you carry the weapons? No, wait a minute. Now, Charlie, no. who did you say left us? Kevin. Kevin. Oh, Kevin. okay. All right. Yeah. As a band, no, we don't. We don't carry weapons. Okay. There are guys who do reenactments and stuff, but the only reason why we dress up is just to look the part. And yeah. We, we, yeah. I mean, so. That's cool. Yeah, we go out to Gettysburg. We, we have a good time. I mean, you know. It's a good active group. It's a community band. They play original, <coughs> original pieces. So, you're, we're talking about you know brass over the shoulder instruments, cornets, things like that, mm -hmm. all from the 1860s, and and that stuff costs money to maintain. Mm -hmm. 
That's mm -hmm. why when we go and we do parades, we have to charge what we charge. But we're all volunteers. What, what, why? What, what's the main cost of maintaining them? Because the it, the, the 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 stuff that is makes the thing work is old and ancient, and you yes. have to you have to kind of keep it up and have people servicing it and so on. Yeah, yeah, and and we have all kinds of uniforms. We have formal dress uniforms with the scabbards, and we have. Well, you're you're a drum you're you're, you're a drummer, and then you got uh, what a fife player? Do you have a fife player? No, we don't have a fife player. Oh, we because then you could have one with a bandage on his head, you know, and you could look like you know. Well, that's that's the Revolutionary War. I'm <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no, yeah. no, we're 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 a brass band, so. We, we we emulate the Philadelphia Brigade Band, which was a group that went into the Civil War and mar and marched with the Second Brigade, which was the Philadelphia Brigade, Irishmen, Germans, things like that. Mm -hmm. And we were at the Battle of Gettysburg and things like that. So what we do is we just reenact that. So and we play with period instruments, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, you know, we're just a bunch of fucking geeks. But most of people that do this stuff are educators, band directors, things like that. I mean, it, it takes a special individual to be into this shit, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the that's the deal. Yeah. So anyway, let me see here. What else is happening? What's happening in the news? Anything? There was I yeah, sometimes drew the factory workers. What? What did you say? The January the what, wait a minute. One at a time. Charlie? What? And it's brewing over the railroad workers. Yeah, you know, I wondered. I thought the Democratic Party was really pro union. <laughs> Supposedly. Yeah. Uh, Bree says he's got to sign out. He sent a message to us. All right. Uh, and he's got to sign out. Goodbye, Goodbye Bree. Thank Bye, you. Bree. Lovely tour today, Bree. Yeah. Terrific. Anyway, um, uh, where what was I saying? I was uh, about the real Democratic yeah. Party. Yeah, the Democratic the Party has usually been very pro-union, and this is kind of an anti-union thing. Yeah. You know, uh, why don't they I, take the money they're going to give people for the uh, schools? You know, for for you know, instead of giving everybody back their money, the ten thousand dollars for school, give it to the railroad. Railroad monies, they make a record profit. You know, I, you know I, somebody, I you when I heard, that. look, when I heard that these, Kidding. what they were fighting over was that the railroads were giving, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, one day sick leave pay. I went. Actually, they're giving zero. No, what, weren't they, what they wanted to give them one. And I'm going, who gets sick for one day? You know, I mean, it's terrible. But I mean, it's doesn't it seem to you, Josh, like it's so unlike the uh, Democrats to go against the unions? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're generally, you know, union supporters. I mean, I think they're still recognizing the right of people to uh, unionize, but also, I guess, weigh in against the, you know, the effects of a strike. So certain industries are certainly more vulnerable nationally than others so they've hmm. I guess decided to but try I, to do that. I, thought, I don't even I, really know what they came up with i, uh, I they, thought that uh, they finally agreed to seven days they uh, split it into two bills and the seven day bill lost oh really yes you know, uh, what what is that was what bullshit is, about what is, splitting what is, it up but what is with people that they can't vote with people you know, I mean, it's it's so mean. Oh, we're not going to give you. Uh, I mean, how how many days sick leave, sick pay do you get in the Congress? It's probably like thirty. You know, Each yeah, month. Not, thirty hmm? a month. No, is it it's thirty a month? <laughs> well, wait a minute. Well, if you can only take one sick day, is that one sick day a year? Or you That's get one the paid year, yeah. oh, for wow. the whole year. Oh, okay. Because I was saying you just get sick, come back to work for two days, cough in people's faces, and go home for another day and get, you know. That's what I would do. I'd, I'd come to work sick and cough in all my boss's faces. Well, who wants, if people are sick and they're not going to come to work because they're afraid they're not going to get paid, you know, 
I mean, do you really want people working while they're sick? <clears throat> no. Stay home. Don't give it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you got a cough, walk into your boss's office, say, sorry about the cough. I just tested positive for COVID. And, and <laughs> yeah, but I, I only had one sick day, and I used that yesterday. Right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. They, the Congress could have forced the company, the, the railroad companies, to pay to give them sick days. They could have come up and passed the law that said they had to give them seven sick days. But leave it to our Congress. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's sure. good. it's not going to get any better now that the Republicans are going to be controlling it. Yeah, well, nothing will get done for two years. Yeah. Oh, they're going to go after Hunter Biden's computer and. Oh well, yeah, that's all they do. They want to stop giving money to Ukraine and you know what I mean. You know everything the American people don't want to do, the Republicans want to do. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Did you see uh, Kanye on Alex Jones? Oh. Yeah, I saw. Uh, yeah, I saw a bit of that. I've if, if in fact that was Kanye, I don't know. The guy was wearing a mask. Yeah, yeah it sounded <laughs> like him. Huh? He he did sound like him. Yeah, uh, but yeah, he was, he was amazing. Well, what's what, what, it, I love Hitler. <laughs> well, he, here were two mistakes he I made. Got out of his mind. They inv he invented the highway. Yeah, that's what he said. And he invented microphones. Yep. And I'm going, really? Now, yeah. he, really he, maybe, he, maybe, maybe he invented a thing called the Audubon, which was a like a freeway. <laughs> but a highway, no, he didn't invent a highway. Highways came to be because you had to have something to drive on. Okay. Well, the Romans had highways. Yeah, the Romans had highways. Okay. He just allocated the funds for the Audubon. That's all he did. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. the, maybe what he was trying to say was the Autobahn. Also, uh, I'm sorry, I use microphones all the time. And believe me, they, they existed before Hitler. Otherwise, how do we do radio in the 20s? Yeah, right. I love my Hitler brand microphone. Yeah, your Hitler <laughs> brand. It, it works. <laughs> it's got a little mustache on it. Yeah, it's got a little mustache. <laughs> Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. You got a hand holding out like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm yeah, a, right. Hey. Yeah. Gotta get her right here. But I mean, yeah, he was a he was even Alec Jones was telling him he was yeah. wrong. Okay, that's how that's how wrong he was. You see, I was amazed. Alec Jones was saying to him, Hey, you know, you're wrong about that. You know. And and I'm going, since when did I suddenly start rooting for Alex Jones? You know? He out Alex Jones, Alex Jones. <clears throat> yes, he did. Anyway. Hey. Some, some big company today announced, I don't know, what, I don't forget the company name, that they're no longer uh, allowing Kanye or whatever. Well, it's name. Twitter. 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 Yeah, Twitter was, Eli kicked them back that's off. That's right. Twitter is the one that, that kicked them off. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and and, and and so I mean, so he's got nowhere to go. Life is terrible for him. Y yes, uh, Brian, you want to say something quickly? Oh, me? Uh, oh, no, uh, please. Oh, I please. hear the music. I love oh, you, you I hear love the music? You. Yeah, I hear the music too. I love you, buddy. Yeah, uh, great having you here today, Brian. Thank you for joining us two days in a row for this guy. Okay. Uh, uh, Jeff, thank you so much. Always appreciate it. Uh, uh, Alan, very nice. Josh, you know we think the world of you and love having you here. Uh, Charlie, get lost. I know. Uh, no. <laughs> well, you, you know that you wouldn't say that to Charlie because he's such a nice guy. You know how can you say anything nasty about he's Charlie? Terrific. And uh, thank you to uh, to Ray, and thank you again to Brian, and thank you Patrick. Good seeing your face yeah. here, fella. Nice, really yeah. nice. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay. There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Goodbye. See you later. Uh, they'll uh, we'll, we'll be converting, convening, convening in a couple of minutes over there on the uh, on the intersection, which Jack will be doing tonight. I will see you again on Monday for the pop up show on Facebook, and then we will see you right back here on. Uh, Wednesday, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.